Hey man, Jabba. It's uh, good of you to come and talk to me. Uh, we've known each other a long time. Too long. Too long, since the Reuters days. Yeah, yeah. And we shared a bureau in uh, KLCC. Yeah. So as I was telling you earlier, you know, my market, uh, my target, uh, kind of like um, market, is the 31-year-old me. When I was at that age, I was in Reuters at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bloomberg, actually, um, had a lot of existential questions. I uh, wanted to start a business, had no idea where to start, had no balls to start it. Uh, wanted to get married to a Malay girl. Wanted to, but again, I mean, that was also existential. Wanted to invest wisely. Had no idea where to start. And you know, we're journalists, right? Yeah. We know a lot of people, but then these kind of existential questions are difficult to get answered by, you know, sources, lah. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah, true, true. So I guess for for someone like you, you you know, you were like me, right? We're both journalists. You came out, started your own business. How difficult of a time was it to start the Malaysian Insider at the time? Uh, it wasn't that difficult as as people think it was because uh, you got to remember this was about what ten or years ago, eleven years to be precise. Yeah. Um, and it was also the sort of golden time of Abdullah Badawi, although his personal stock was going down. Uh, promises that he made in two thousand four didn't pan out, uh, but a lot of businessmen were interested in this. Um, Malaysia, where things were a bit more freer, and they wanted to uh, put in some money in media at that time. When you say they, meaning there's there's backers lah. There are backers, yeah, a whole bunch of businessmen in Malaysia who who believed in uh, Abdullah Badawi, and decided that they would invest in uh, highlighting uh, equally bad news and good news about the government of Malaysia yeah. and the country. So I'm more interested in the entrepreneurial journey. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they come to you or did you go to them? Did uh, you think? Did you dream up the idea? Uh, well, okay. So I thought of the idea somewhat. Uh, they had an idea of more independent media, lah. Is that? Yeah, very independent media. They had an idea of setting up a newspaper. Uh, I had an idea of setting up a website, and I convinced them that it was better if they had the money to do this, and which they had. I said, I'll, I'll help them do this uh, as an entrepreneur. Uh, unfortunately, at that point in time, I got a contract to work in Jakarta. I remember that time. Yeah, so I, I was with you in the same Reuters co- exactly, uh, office in KLCC. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I got a contract to go to Jakarta, and I decided to to skip the business of of, of quitting Reuters and set up business in Malaysia because, uh, you know, every dream of a, of a correspondent was to uh, to go work overseas. You know, whether it's uh, Jakarta or Hong Kong. Uh, Singapore London bureaus I mean these are among the interesting bureaus of course the best bureau is Bangkok and I took my chance I said I'll go uh, but I set up a, a sort of a, a skeleton crew uh, and said look you know this is these people can work out the dream uh, the mutual dream we have you have the dosh you have the ambitions of setting up something like this I have a dream of setting up a business that will eventually do well uh, but I got to hold on running it because I'm going to Jakarta which is what I did uh, I think, uh, you know, you're coming, uh, if you're an entrepreneur in the media world, you really got to go for a niche market. You know, you really got to know what you're going for. For example, what we're doing here, lifestyle or nothing serious. Because Inspirational. But, you know, galvanize people to do something that, with their lives. So that's the thing. More yeah, lives, because right? this, this is also, when you inspire people, they will want to watch you more. Yeah. The thing about hard news is, is depressing, you know. There's enough hard news in the world. Sure. You There's know? too much bad news in the world today. Yeah, yeah. But I'm a hard news you feature. Are. So so uh soft news features I do but not as well as you would do it, right? But we talk talking about eleven years ago anyway. So got into the business, uh, worked out a few deals on advertising and all that and it was going hunky dory for a while. But, you know, as an entrepreneur in the media space, you you know no one should have this notion actually in any business anyone should have this notion that you can make money as as fast as you can cook uh, instant you noodles can, you can burn it <laughs> yeah you can't you can't you, you know it's a long burn you need to have a five year target uh, any business any venture you do you yeah. must have a a, a medium term target yeah. you know you got to know that you will burn money yeah. first and then you might break even and then you will make money right there's no Sure fire thing in that, you know, hey, you know, uh, Chuang, uh, here's uh, 100,000 ringgit, uh, give me back 200,000 in a year's time. No such thing. No such thing. Right? So a lot of people 
believe that so. And I think that for, as a journalist, the fear I had then was, I know I couldn't return the money within a year or within two years. You know, so I was very realistic. I was very realistic that any money we put into a media venture, particularly a media venture, uh, would take some time to to uh, bear any fruit. You know, so yeah. Were you always entrepreneurial, or did it happen because did you always want to leave the fold and become your own your own boss, and um, or was it really a case of them approaching you with this with this money and say, hey, Jabba, I want you to be the one who fronts it because you know you've got a certain level of experience. Well, I think it's a combination of both. Yeah. You know, as journalists, I've always been the one spending money. Because journalists are not by nature entrepreneurial. Journalists right? are by the nature... The last thing on their mind is uh, starting a business. We are not entrepreneurial. We don't know how to manage people. Uh, we're only good at at uh, witnessing things and explaining to people who are not there. That's, right. that's precisely our talent, right? Uh, but a lot of people think that's good enough for talent, talent because you get to network with people, you get to know things. And... People see value in the information we get. And I think that's the most important thing that, that journalists have, or anyone in our business have, that our real value is we can extract information which is beneficial to other people. Yeah, and news you can use, essentially, right? Exactly, yeah. I mean, you in business, uh, you, you were doing uh, stock markets and all that. See, people like that because they think they can punt ahead of the curve and, and make some, you know, and they think you know better than anyone else because you would compare information and you would check it and verify it so you know more. So people like us uh, seem to attract people who think, hey, I can make some money out of this guy if he believes he can make some money out of this. And, and so that's what happened, right? So explain the time when you came back from Jakarta and yeah. then you said, okay, right, this is my time. Uh, if not now, never, right? So you said, okay, I'm going to put in my papers and you've been with writers a long time. Yeah. Right? I don't know, 15, 20 years or whatever, right? About 10 over years, yeah. 10 over years. Yeah. So it's a long time. You've got, um, it's either you continue with the company for the rest of your life uh, or you take the plunge. So a lot of people who start businesses, they, they, they don't have the balls, right? It's a big thing to leave you the safety of your job and the paycheck. Yeah, of course. I Look, you're leaving Reuters. Yeah, it's and one Reuters, of the Reuters best Reuters jobs Reuters. in the world, right? Yeah. This, is the, this is the old Reuters, of course. It's one of the best jobs in the <laughs> yeah, world. Yeah. Uh, you go to Jakarta, you go to all these bureaus, you get hardship allowance, you get a lot more pay than yeah. in a lot of other places. You're making and good money. I was making more than good money, you know. Uh, and I, I was a bachelor then, so a bachelor now. You make a lot of good money. You don't spend a lot because whatever you do, it's paid for by the company. Yeah. Right? So, but to take that great leap is because, uh, you know, you work, I, I've been in the business for too long, right? Uh, by the time I was, I was going to leave Reuters, I've been in the business uh, for more than 20 years, right? Um, and I decided that, you know, it was time to, to do something else. I didn't want to work for anyone else anymore. I wanted to work for myself and see how far I can go. Um, and of course things uh, snowball into you start a venture like this you don't know you can have the best planning you can imagine that you just need maybe 20 people maybe 15 at most yeah. but demands come to you to do this do that the very nature of the Malaysian uh, um, political landscape at the time so you need more people so you hire more people uh, and, and you know what at that point in time you had to pay a bit Above the premium to get them on board, exactly That's right. right to run to run. This was to compete with Malaysia Kini, the New Straits Times, the Star, everybody else. They were all in the space, right? Uh, BFM was just starting out, but BFM was uh, radio, right? Yeah. Since we're talking about the print uh, market, the text market, the video market. So you 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 run a good business in the sense that you have uh, talent, and then you need to find ways to pay for it yeah and so you get in a couple of guys who can sell it well and and for a while we had you know but you know sales guys are like uh you know right backs right or full backs as it were or what do you call them they uh, don't score goals they just make sure the goals yeah. don't go in exactly right, <laughs> right. So, and so so they are actually more priced in in, in the business than actually your news gathering talent yeah. you know the one lesson I learned is you can have the best product in the world. You can be good at anything you do, but you can't sell it. No use. I remember the Malaysian Insider Java. It was amazing. It came out. You had amazing stories. You had political exposés. You were writing stories that no one else dared to publish. Yeah. And uh, in the run-up to the 
uh, 2009 elections, I remember some of the coverage you guys did was amazing. Yeah. And you had an amazing name. And I think on the back of that, you, re- you really made, you know, you really cut your teeth in the business world. What was the biggest challenge in those days? I think the biggest challenge is trying to balance the books where possible. Yeah. Right? Because uh, you were burning, what, half a million? A, a we were or burning two, two, three hundred thousand a month. That's huge. Right? Uh, well, you know, uh, when you have about 40 people, 300,000 isn't much. That's not a lot, right? Yeah. yeah. I, you, I Look, it's very simple, right? I wouldn't want to pay people below a certain sum in Kuala Lumpur because that's not fair. Anyway, I, I think... Well, we are journalists. We know these things, right? Exactly. We, we right? never want to be undervalued. Exactly, right? So you got to pay people a minimum salary of 2000 2005. And then with that comes your uh, surgery uh, contributions. And then, you know, we are in the business of news gathering, which means we got to pay for them to travel here, then everywhere. So that's also cost, right? So things just add up. And people think, look, the internet is cheap and free. No, servers it's cost a lot, it's right? Not. Equipment costs a lot. Things cost a lot, especially you buying it at a premium for the simple reason. You can buy cheap stuff, but it's not going to work, right? So you... you Straight away, buy the good stuff that can last you three, four years. So we know, we kind of know the story about the Malaysian insider. Yeah. We kind of know the buyout from the edge. We kind of know the shutdown. We kind of know the fact that you're in a jail with Hoketa. You know, all that. Yeah. All that is in the public domain already. But what is not so clear is, is the commercial viability of a media business today. Because truth be told, the, the mainstream guys are dying, and we know that. Yeah. The online guys, um, and even the most established names, they try and put up a digital um, presence. There's no proposition because they're yeah. being eaten alive by Facebook and Google. Actually, actually it's not right. so much uh, Facebook and Google that eats us alive. It's WhatsApp. It's a chat program. WhatsApp, that's right. All you yeah. just need to do is to send breaking news, right? Exactly. Uh, a couple of guys taking a yeah, video yeah, yeah. of the shooting or whatever. Yeah, it goes, it goes all over the world, right? Yeah, that's so, right. And so that's, that's where it is now. But our value is, isn't as tangible as, as dollars and cents or, or any which way to a return to investor or shareholders. Our value at is intangible. Our business, the business you're in, the business I'm in, is, is to give information, to provide knowledge, right? There is some value in that. And people th- know that they can make something out of that. Okay? That, but as I said, it's a long burn. The business I'm in is a long burn business. It's not two years, make your money, get out. You can. You can if you're, you're thinking, I'm going to sell it off to someone. I build a name. Yeah. I build enough of presence. I, I burn a lot of money. It's the it's the Uber Grab. Uh, yeah, because I've, I've, I've always thought, Jabba, that when you call your company the Malaysian Insight or the Malaysian Insider, then you're restricting yourself to just Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not like you're, you're the Asian Insider or you're the Asian uh, Insight. Yeah. And then suddenly, bam, you know, you've got like, I don't know, 25 countries in Asia. Yeah. Is there a reason behind that? Well, actually, you know, I do have the Asian Insider. <laughs> okay. you know? and, and this is the start of it. You know, yeah. eventually we should we should grow. Yeah, the business. Uh, we have the Asian Insider. We have the Asian Insight. Uh, we have all those names yeah. available, um, and we bought all those names. Uh, I, I and for a while I got uh, friends from other countries who were interested in setting up a, a, a region wide business. Yeah, right. But it now took off because. Um, I look at the cost of it, even for just having two or three people in every country. Uh, when you talk to colleagues who used to work with you in an international news agency, there's a certain expectation of salary. Yeah. Right? Uh, at least. At least, yeah. I, I mean, look, when we set up the Malaysian Insight, I didn't take a salary for a while. You know, uh, investors' money, I, I had a decent payout from the edge when they closed down the Malaysian Insider. And, you know, I'm a bachelor, I don't need much money to live by. Uh, so I didn't for, for a year I didn't take a salary uh, I, I cut everybody's salary the ones who returned from the insider I cut everybody's salary by 20% and we were just scrimping through you know and it's still the, the case till today no one's got a higher salary than before in fact everyone's working on a lesser salary than the good old days of Malaysian insider so how does one make a media business commercially viable I mean that's the main thing right because I think there's a lot of co- people out there who have their hearts in the right place, who do want to start a business and, and do a good thing and have that parallel mandate, right? To, to have a business, to be your own boss, but also to make money 
and there's a lot of people like us, right? Yeah. Is, is there like a proposition for a media business out there? No? There is. There is a proposition. I think you just need to drill down to the market segment that you want, which which consume more, which which need to be inspired more. People who who actually like watching, reading, knowing. That market is always there. I look the current generation of or a market out there anyway. The ones between the ages of fifteen to forty. They consume more uh, knowledge, information at least, than anyone else before that. I know? saw your interview with Mumbrella. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know when it's that. One, two years ago? Two years ago. Two years ago. Mm-hmm. And then you said at the time to the person, um, something, Emily Dickinson. I yeah. Think, you told her that uh, you're hiring more young people. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sure you have a lot of interactions with uh, kind of like a, the younger set, uh, mm-hmm. the generation and a half and the generation below you. What did they tell you? What is the feedback? Because they still need to get the news, but they get it in a very, very different way yeah, now. Yeah, no. So, so basically, uh, for that younger set, it's going to be very visual. They consume it's things very visual, okay. very visual, hundred okay. percent visual. They consume things in in tiny bits. You know, nothing more than a couple of minutes. Uh, look, this is the Snapchat crowd. This is the Insta TV crowd. This is the TikTok crowd. You know, this is a crowd that cannot consume anything beyond a bite size because they're distracted all the time right so you need to get five seconds of their attention span how are you going to get it okay so either i'm really worried about what you just said uh-huh. or i'm very inspired by, by what you just said yeah. because the inspiration behind what do more is is a joe rogan podcast right? and joe yeah. rogan's podcast they go for these three hours right two hours there's some cases where they go for four and a half and you know what right even the live stream there's 30 40 000 people tuned in and then uh, his hit count, uh, his view count on Joe Rogan is like in the millions. Yeah. So obviously there's a market for, for long form. But I don't know where it's coming from. And I don't know how different Asia is from America. Yeah, yeah. So that's the one is, thing you've got to ask that, yourself right? this question. I think there is a cultural difference between America and the rest of Asia. I think people in Asia... But who, who says that Americans are watching Joe Rogan? Because I'm watching Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah. And he talks yeah, to sleep scientists. He talks to Lennox Lewis. Yeah, yeah. He talks to Elon Musk. You've got to ask yourself this question. It's the subjects that matter more than, than whether he's in America or in England, right? Yeah. It's the topics that he picked. So for anyone doing this business, you, you need to sort of curate for a market segment, a demographic that you think wants this. Right, so you go for science, you go for entrepreneurship, you go for things that captures the imagination of a lot of people. Right, a fair amount of the three million subscribers that you have who are listening to three, four hours in a in a world of nearly seven billion. What's three million? Correct, right. absolutely right. Yeah. It's like zero point one percent. Yeah. So you market. so you're going for that market, but the three million each of them puts in one ringgit as three million ringgit. Right. Assuming you can monetize one ring. Assuming you can, yes. But, that, right? but that's once you have a base of, of two, three million. Yeah. Right? If Ku Su Chuang does this and goes worldwide, you've got a base of two, three million, then you can find a lot of people interested in investing in you because your voice will influence people. So you and I are roughly about the same age, right? Uh, and we come across people in their thirties all the time, yeah. right? And a lot of them are, 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 are budding aspiring media media entrepreneurs, yes. right? And imagine we're just in a room with them, right? What would you tell them? If you were to advise them on starting their own business in the 21st century, what would it look like? I'll tell them, do what interests them. Yeah. Exactly. Just do what interests them. Is it about passion? It's, it's not so much passion as much as, in, as it is something which just captures their imagination. Okay. I think, you know, passion is, I like doing this, but doing something that... that they want to do is different from you like doing it to me to my to, to my belief it is there are people who for example have a passion for sneakers or vintage yeah, t-shirts and there's a lot right? of them yeah but there's a lot of people who see value in this I've got I just had lunch with a friend his son is is, is 17 this year is sitting down for his exams son makes money buying and selling sneakers and shirts online Okay, the, the son buys sneakers. And it's a hit or miss. He'll wear it once or twice and he sells it. Some pairs, he can make 500 ringgit. That's a lot of right? money. Some pairs, he can lose 50 ringgit. But he lives in a world where, whether it's TikTok or Insta story, 
He buys his pair of sneakers. And he lives in this world. He lives it's in a world, world that I don't know, but yeah. Yeah. I, I know this world exists. Yeah, this is the world of your son. Yeah. Right? This, uh, I mean, look at his Legos. You know, you can make this. You can make this. And then they can sell it. I mean, and they sell it for double of what they paid for it. Mint in box, done. mint in box yes. down the line ten years from yeah. now. This 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 shit is gonna be worth money, man. It's worth a lot because so whenever you see one of this, the first uh, first edition, you buy two. Yeah, one exactly. to make, one to save. And yeah, I've got a whole room full of like. Exactly. Mint so 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 <laughs> this is not so much passion as much as a passion to see value down the line yeah. and make money off it down the line. Yeah. So anyone who's about twenty five to thirty one now. Collect the whiskey bottles. Collect the the watches, right, which are affordable bottles. now. Anything, anything which is of um, yeah, of, of a limited quantity yeah. at this point in time, right? Anything which you know in five years time will have value because things go in cycles, right? Things go, everything goes in a cycle. The the Volkswagen Bug, the Mini, original Mini. That's right. Maybe the new Mini now. That's right. Uh, the Land Rover, which which has just finished. Uh, the Defender. That's yeah. right. I have one. I bought a Defender. Did you? I bought a Defender last year because I knew they were going to end production of it. Short wheelbase or long wheelbase? Long wheelbase. One, 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 zero, right? And it was, it's a 20-year-old uh, Landy. Uh, the guy bought it off Mindef. He made a mistake because he should have bought the station wagon. Instead of the four uh, four crew, and he did it up, and he showed me all his bills, how much he paid for it, and what he did for it, and premium of five thousand ringgit. I said fine, nice one, excellent, nice one, really good, really yeah, good yeah, purchase, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I know this this uh, Land Rover will only appreciate in value, you know. So, so in the media world now, right? Yeah, you've become a bit of a for one of a better word, a bit of a media kind of like um, a mogul. In local circles, lah. Well, huh? <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm a media mogul. I would say that... Uh, you know one or two things about the industry, right? I, I know enough of the industry, yes. What does it take to make money in this industry? Today? Uh, today, I, not I 10 d- years from now? No, today. no, no. I, it, 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 today is, is to feed what people want, seem to want, and, and, and add value to that. So if WhatsApp can serve this... Um, Situation. Yes. If YouTube can, fit, and you know, we, we saw that with the crash shootings, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Facebook live stream, YouTube, yeah, whatever, yeah. and they were very slow to take it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So where 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 is the start online? Where is the where's Kini? Where is where you where are you guys? So you, you talk about those examples. Those examples tell you that anybody can be a broadcaster and publisher. Everybody, right? Anybody everybody, and everybody can. Right? But it's a one-off thing. You think about it, right? So when you run a business like this, you got to get the hits all the time. You got to get the viral videos all the time, right? You need a team of young people looking at different things, right? I mean, for example, in Malaysia, the focus is on esports. Actually, the mm. whole region, the focus is on esports. You know, every kid with uh, uh, cold glass uh, spectacles <laughs> can now be a athlete of sorts, that's right? right. Uh, so, so that's where it is now. Everyone's putting money in doing reportage and, and uh, commentating on esports, so so if you have a media outfit today that just just exclusively on esports, you've got a head start with other people and that's you make like money the, for the next two years. That's the ESPN, right? Yeah, yeah, but right? it's the E E S P N. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like PewDiePie times twenty. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So you can do it now, you know. But the other thing that that makes money in in Asia now is not is because we are so focused on the English market, we forget there are various languages out there. Right, you will do something in Bahasa Malaysia, for example. You've got a market of two hundred and eighty million people. Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, Malaysia, yeah. right? Uh, if you do something in Cantonese, you still have a big market. In Mandarin, you still have a big market. You do things in uh, in Tagalog, there is still a market. You know, so so there are markets which are based on languages. You know, SoftBank came in about ten years ago to see me. Uh, they were recommended to me, and they wanted to invest something. In Southeast Asia, they, they were doing so successful in uh, China, right? And they, they asked, uh, uh, they looked at what we were doing and said we were too small for them. But they said, they asked me what would be good. I said, you got to go for the Bahasa market. So they went straight to Indonesia because that's a bigger market. So when you look at, at ventures now, particularly in media space, uh, you got to look at a market which is underserved by people like us because... We are English speaking. We are we are middle class, right? There is a yeah. whole class of people out there who are aspirational, who want things, uh, who speak a different language, who who consume a different language. Is there a lot of money still out there that are looking for huge good ideas, amount, good people, good backers? Huge, right? huge amount of money out there splashing about, waiting for 
ten ideas they can put in a little money in and see which one takes off, right? So, ah, uh, we're so focused in Malaysia. You know, I I keep going back to Jakarta. I used to work there. I well, think Jakarta's huge. Jakarta's alone about twenty five million people. Yep, by uh, itself. That that's your daytime population, right? right? And so that's your daytime population. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but crazy. so I think it's five fifty million people. Five percent are super rich. That's thirteen million people. That's the market you want. You don't need the twenty five million. You need thirty million are super rich, right? And so so, Jakarta, and for that matter, Indonesia has this huge market for uh, fashion for men. Right, because they're aspirational. They 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 want to look as good as the women. And this is a, maybe it's a K-pop uh, influence, the J-pop influence. Same thing in Malaysia, but nobody focuses on that market in Malaysia. Anybody wants to go in today, say, look, I want to do uh, media business videos and all the how to to put foundation or whatever. I'm sure you use it with, with, on your TV yeah, spots, yeah, you right? Can, you can tell, yeah. but no one does it as a hang on a minute as you know you can do all these little videos that people do you can do more than that no one does it in Malaysia why doesn't Jabba Sadiq do it because I'm not interested in the market <laughs> you know I have because you've got to be impassioned about it right you need to have some passion about it right I have, I, I'm not in the age group that wants to do this you know I'm the age group that wants to know how to dress up when you're in your 40s and 50s now you know are camo pants still in? Yeah. Uh, do you still go around with Without your upturn? Without looking like a complete idiot, yeah, exactly. right? exactly. <laughs> or you go with your upturn, hack it, or yeah. whatever, or yeah. you still carry a man bag. Yeah. Now, we don't have... We, I like to do that. You know? yeah, and, yeah. and something I like to do this year, I think, yeah. in Bahasa. I think that's the bigger market. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, but I can't do it all alone. I need to find people who are equally passionate about this. Is, come on, why don't you run with it? You know, I'm, at, I'm just at a spot in life where I say, you know... I wish I was 20 years younger. I'd have the same kind of hunger to do this. I, I don't. But the ironic thing is that, this, that, is that if, you, if you were 20 years younger, say say 30 years old, yeah. right, um, you would be much more likely to make mistakes, much more likely to be impatient, much more likely to uh, overhire too early. And today, you're much more, you're more measured, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of um, reticence among investors to invest in older people. But I think there's a school of thought which says that if you invest in older people, um, your chance of success will be higher. Of course. Of because course, they, yeah. they know more. Yeah, They've yeah. been through the mill a couple of times. Yeah. See, investors should, should uh, treat older men <laughs> like how women treat older men. A lot of young girls, you, you know, when I was, I was 30 years old, I always wondered why women went out with older men. Because I, they recognized the now maturity. Now I know. Now I know, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe, the, maybe the money, I'm not sure, but it's the maturity and wisdom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So investors should treat men our age like how women treat us. So the media That's business, it. media business, right? Is it still advertising sponsorship? No, no, no. It's beyond no? that. Now yeah. it's 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 native advertising. It's all branded content. I look. The best example was Red Bull. Okay. You know when they took that uh, Felix guy. Yeah. Uh, put a Bound couple. Gardner, right? Gardner, yeah, you yeah, know, the, mounted the, a Mounted a few GoPros on him falling, and he yeah. did free falling. Yeah. That did a lot more for Red Bull than anything else. They don't, they don't have to advertise. You just have to take all your marketing money, put it in one major event that captures global attention. Got it done. Do you guys do a lot of that now? Because I know you used to have a huge video team. We, we still, we have, we've increased our video team. We're trying to do a lot more of that. Uh, but here, here's the thing, right? I, I realize when, when you're young, right, um, you're scared to do it. Right? You have but now fear. you just don't care. You just no, just they, they, so I tell them just do things that matter to you, right? But they think their ideas are uh, too, uh, too, brittle, too, too, too yeah. Too, so I say you because you don't do enough research. Today you can do a lot more research in an hour than I could do at my time your age, right? Uh, you know they they just don't back it up. I says all I need is this much of backing up data and run with the idea go and do this you know go and, go and cover these people do a series on this ask them to do a series on offbeat and are clients willing to pay for that yeah of course they're willing to pay for it you know people are willing to pay for offbeat ideas that put them right in the center of a conversation right Every, you see it's all about eyeballs and engagement engagement and, and being uh, the talk of town right I look, the best example is Nando's. Every time there's a controversy, they go in with some uh, slick uh, advertising copy and done. People, people go and buy Nando's. Nobody ever thinks of buying Nando's, right? But when this happens, goes around on WhatsApp, 
people don't buy diapers. That's right. That's right. right. And it's a, and and it's chicken business. And it's a chicken business. <laughs> yes, right? It is. Right. It's yeah. not different from KFC, but no. it's that much more slick. Exactly. Right. So yeah. so you capture imagination of people. Uh, by being smart about it, by knowing that this is the market you're going for, and today interestingly, the owner of um, Nando's is someone yeah. our, our age. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it's still the same uh, family that owns it, right? Yeah, the Mac family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I just saw recently a uh, guy who's our age is just bought over ANW, right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, so and so he's got interesting plans, right? Making ANW great again. That's right. And he, just like Donald Trump. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> But you know, you need someone who grew up with that to yeah. to see value in it. So yeah. he's got a passion, uh, either for uh, the F and B business, and and this is something from his childhood, right? And and the previous owners of uh, A and W just took it because it was there, and and you know it was just part of their portfolio of companies. They had no passion for it, you know. So you need someone with passion for something, and more than a passion, a passion of making money out of it, right? Two passions are required yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. So insider right now, um, insights actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, how tough is it? You know, is it's, it tough? It's, it's tough? The, I think the toughest part is because you still got to burn, right? You still, still you still got to burn, but the toughest part is not so much the burn. Uh, to me, is is that you are now on a very level playing field with everyone else, and everyone's getting to your space and doing the same things you do. So so now we've got to shift our focus and say, okay, what is it that other media companies are doing are not doing, and where we can fill in and get the eyeballs and be the talk of the town, and get money coming in again. So where are those ideas coming from? Because you've got a lot of competitors, right? You got the yeah. money mails, you've got the kidneys, you got the, you know, yeah. the, the I mean the stars. So all of them, all of us are just hiring younger and younger people because we're going for a younger and younger crowd. Is that the right thing to do? Somewhat, because the younger crowd doesn't have the money to pay for anything. Right? But they got ideas. They, they, you get eyeballs from them, so you're hoping to get advertising dollar for that eyeballs, right? Yeah, yeah. But you should, we should go for what you said earlier, which was very interesting. Uh, for the text market, you got to go for the long form. Yeah. You go for the good read, the one that's informative and gives you a wider perspective of things, because people who subscribe to the site, subscribe to Kini or myself, or to Wall Street or pay for Guardian, they want the longer, better read. Right, they will pay for it, and that that's quality money there because that sustains you, uh, uh, in a in a in a longer way than say advertising dollar. Advertising dollar is fickle; it goes everywhere, especially online. But subscription uh, payments uh, are a much more solid base. You try to do subscriptions. You try to do we a paywall. Doing, yeah, we're still doing yeah? A paywall. Yeah. How's that going? Because cause it's a tough call. I mean, the Financial Times, they can do it because of the Financial Times, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Times of London can do that because of the Times of London, yes, right? Yes. But the Star tried it. Well, here they're going to start it again. Yeah. Uh, right? Sooner or later. But I, look, you, if you don't start it now and don't sustain it, it where are you going to get the money from? Right? It should at least pay for 30% of your cost. So, branded content is branded content. Yeah. And you know the proposition yeah. there. Firewall, uh, paywalls is one thing. Yeah. There's paywalls, yeah. right? So, there's nothing new about those two things, right? No, no, now, nothing right? new. So, 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 the only way to make money in between is, is somewhat uh, borrow the so called BFM model, to my mind, yeah. and do ground events. Okay. Right? And so, so basically, everything feeds into uh, a pool where everybody cross subsidizes each other. Right? Uh, so, you then you become you be part of a, a brand that. Uh, everybody likes, yeah. everybody consumes, and and can it, relate to, and, yeah, and exactly. can trust as well. Exactly, yeah. So, so f- for example, I am trying to go for the older market. You know, I'm I in in text, I'm trying to go for the older market. In videos, I'm trying to go for the younger market. So I I serve two very interesting. Can markets. you do that within the you same platform? You can, you can, platform? you can, because uh, your brand has to be elastic enough to give a different experience to everybody who comes in. Right, uh, you can take what you're good at at a text level and use elements of it at your video level, right? And you can take your videos and widen the perspective for the older generation. Uh, it's not so much even older generation. I mean, people our age are used to videos, right? Yeah. It's just that they don't have the time to sit through videos, right? They might have the time to to sit through audio podcasts because they they're multitasking. Right, so for example, they, they, you know, today, what we've learned from all the research we do, all the metrics that we do, we have, is that people consume us more during meal times. 
Interesting. That's when they why have you, that time. Why do you think that is? Oh, because they've got more time. The lunch times and the yeah, dinner times. Yeah, because everybody's just rushing to food. It's very simple. You, you have all these apps that give you food, bring food to your table, whether it's your food pandas or your dal makan and all that. Essentially, you're eating alone. Essentially, you're, so it's you're, a single crowd. It's the yeah. the the belum kawen lah, right? Belum kawen or you want sudah kawen, but they're eating alone because they have no time to have long lunches that you and I yeah. used to as journalists. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So you as journalists, we yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we we can do this two three hour lunches yeah, yeah, because yeah. someone is covering our beat or we are doing it to get something, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, if you ever worked in Singapore Reuters uh, at the Science Park. Everybody buys their lunch and comes back and eats at the table. Sits at the table and do their work. I, I'm sure you did that in Hong that's Kong. Right, that's right. That's right. That's uh, right. When you're in uh, uh, Bloomberg, yeah. Or what, yeah. Same. 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 Right? Same. So that's the market. That sushi in Tokyo is same. Yeah, you're back right? in the terminal. You're working. Exactly. So 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 that's the one that consumes media, right? So our spikes come during lunch and dinner. People are alone watching, or listening, or reading. So so we can we can count the. The eyeballs, you know, as they go up, how many screen lengths, you know, they, they, they are enough did uh, codes embedded in your uh, HTML to tell you, okay, this guy has reached this level of of text, this level of text. Incredible. Yeah. So, so we know this is what it is, right? So uh, you can tell exactly where within the story, how far down the video. Yeah, you can reached. tell how many, what percentage of readers go down first part of the story, first screen, second screen, third screen, fourth screen. Nothing actually ever goes beyond three screens where possible. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody yeah. has the patience to read. Yeah. You know, if they do, it's only like 3% of the market that reads it, right? So that's the older people who, who like to consume. But a lot of people are very conscious of their health, uh, their eye health, so they don't <laughs> keep scrolling up. Yeah. But that's that's how interesting it has become. You can measure. You can't do this in newspapers. You can't do it in magazines. You can do it with, uh, with uh, mobile content and... Desktop content. So do you spend more on video or do you spend more on your text, guys? I've invested more on videos, actually. Yeah? Yeah. But yeah, to get good videos, you can't do it in three minutes, right? It takes well, you a day can't, or two. You can't. Yeah. There's a production element yeah. to it. So we've got a couple of producers, a couple of cameramen. Now, now, the only question is, at this time, is do you invest in equipment or in people and ideas? I, I'm going to bet more on people and ideas because... I look, even a camera phone can do the job, really. Yeah, so the Vice model, right? Yeah. And they had an amazing model, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they got bought out. I think they, think they, they got bought out. A couple hundred million bucks or something yeah. like that. I, I mean, someone's got to fact check me on this, but yeah. for sure, right? There's a lot of money. Is that day still relevant or is it moving so fast? Because even even the models of the Facebooks and the YouTubes, I mean, yeah. they got so badly flayed for Christchurch that people are deleting their accounts like yeah, yeah, massively, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, right? I, think, I think the ones who delete their accounts are making a big hue and cry about it. Yeah. I think it's negligible in the long run to see okay, actually how many thousand people actually deleted their accounts. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why small model still works. I mean, AJ, AJ Plus... They invested. They're continuing to invest. Uh, I saw that. I've, I've seen some of this. Uh, one of our mates is in uh, KL doing it now, right? Asa yeah. Shukri. He's back yeah. doing... Asa Shukri, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's really good content. But yeah. some of the, uh, the view count is like... It's not great. No, no, it's not. It's not great. And then you got a cat um, that does, you know, dances in front of a TV to yeah. Billy, Billy, Billy Jean or whatever. Yeah. That cat has two million views. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's but, crazy. But that tells you people need distraction. They can't deal with all the horrors that uh, they that need we produce. Yeah. yeah. They need distraction. Yeah. The, the 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 two economies that, that will run for us now, the two business ventures is is one is a surveillance economy, right? Uh, whatever you are being so surveilled in a sense, right? You're being watched. Yeah. Whatever you do is data for, for marketeers and all that. Yeah. The other market is a distraction, you know, what can distract someone from whatever he does? Can we can we do more dancing cats? Can we do more grumpy cats? Can we do more angry cats? Can we do Dogs that walk on on their hind legs. <laughs> Did you do that? No, I, I, there, it's a huge business there. I look, it's it's a Japanese thing, right? But can you monetize those? Of numbers? course, you can. See anything that works in Japan can work in the rest of the world. Yeah. Think of the Walkman. That's right. right? That's yeah. right. That's so you right. just have to look at Japan for all your future trends, <laughs> and, and work something out that way. Seriously, seriously, you know. Uh, I now make it a point to go to Japan every couple of years, save enough money to go, just to actually wander around the streets and see what people do. I think that I think that's where it is, really. I think anyone. I wish somebody told told this to me when I was in my twenties. Go to Japan every three years. Go on the cheap. Just walk around. Don't go to all the Shinjukus and Harajukus. Go elsewhere. Just see what people do. What does Japan tell you? Japan tells me because Japan is a world where the people 
uh, have no life. Yeah, really, that's right. right. They're they, working they, all the time. Exactly, right? So they need distraction. They need all they the need money. They need escapes. Yes, all the money they make goes to pay for 90% of their life. So the 10% is what? Right? Do they have any hopes of getting married and having a kid outside a shoebox? I don't know. But they need to spend their money on something. Right. What are they spending the money on? On distractions, on, on little electronic pets, on, on all kinds of things. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't figure that out. I mean, you know, you go to their cafes and women are dressed as French maids and, and all kinds of funny stuff happens and the guys are just there looking. They, they, they just worry. It's a really people. weird society. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but, but there it is. We're all going to become like that. It's going to be... Uh, Do you think so? Yeah, it's going to be like a movie, right? Uh, Black Rain, was it Black Rain? Yeah, Black yeah, Red, yeah, Michael, yeah. Um, Michael Douglas, Michael right? Douglas yeah, that's exactly. right. We're going to have a dystopian world. Shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> We're the last of the Lord to be happy uh, with sunshine, I think. So what does Jabba Sadiq do with his money? A lot of people think that you're, you, you're a main man, okay. right? What do I do with my money? Um, well, it goes a lot to, to repair the cars that I buy. So what cars have you got now? Uh, so I've only got... Uh, Three cars. I've got yeah. the Land Rover. Yeah. The 110. The 110. Defender. I got an old Isuzu D-Max. That's nice. I used to have one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Completely paid off. So there's, you know, there's, there's uh, nothing to pay for it. A reliable engine. Fantastic yeah. car. I've got a Toyota 86, uh, which replaced my old ZX. Uh, which is probably the more most interesting car. Most interesting car, yeah. Front engine, rear-wheel drive, yeah, yeah, two-liter, yeah. light. Light, yeah. Beautiful. Fantastic handling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I think I've just got another two years to pay for it um, I got an apartment I paid off a long time ago um, and that's it so so every uh, little other money I have I spend on traveling uh, as a bachelor I don't have to spend on kids education yeah, like you well, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's a big thing it's a, it's a huge it's thing a for you thing, right yeah, yeah. so I don't have to do that so I, I travel I travel on the cheap uh, I buy and sell cameras uh, yeah. So yeah, it's a passion which I can make you money. You buy and of. sell cameras. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. I know you told me before you got at least like eight cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of which a couple at least are like us. Yeah, yeah. A couple it's, a of it's a big thing for you because I, I follow your Instagram and you. Yeah, you, so you know you take some amazing pictures. I, well, I try. I, I, so best thing about being in the in the in the this world of knowing people who own like us is yeah. you can get good deals if you look out for it. Yeah. On eBay, on on Carousel, on all little forums. There are a huge number of people who buy a Leica and know they have made the biggest mistake of their life. Yeah, yeah, really? And they will sell so it, it, it just is it, to cut is it, their losses. So is it really a big mistake to buy an M2? Uh, it's a big mistake to buy any the M series. When you don't know how to use it? I mean, if you don't know how to use it and you're cockeyed and you don't know how to focus. <laughs> so that, that's what it is. Right? And buying the M series is the least of your problems. The main problem is you got to buy the glass, the yeah, lenses, yeah, right? Those yeah. cost a lot more than the bodies. Yeah. But once you do it, and then you think, oh my God, you know, I can't shoot with this. Um, so then, then you, you got to flog it off. And and the value of a of a M series is greater in Europe than in Asia. Yeah. Right. So, they're, so they're basically but then how are you gonna, how are you going to pack it off? On, on eBay, it just costs a lot more. You're just paying for a lot for, and getting back less. So it's not worth it. So what is happiness for you? Is there such a thing as happiness? Did you think of that time in your life when you're like 50 years old and, you know, you've come to a point in your life where you seek more fulfillment than commercial fulfillment? And are you at that point in time? No, in no, I, I still, no? I, I, yeah. I still, I'm still chasing dreams. Yeah. Uh, I, there's still a lot of things I want to do. Uh, yeah. The only contentment I have is when I go off to your home island. Yeah, Penang. Penang. I just got back from there. Yeah. Uh, I go around. You're constantly there because you're always taking pictures I'm, I'm there. I'm there more than you are. And you're there at six. Picture. You're up at six thirty in the morning taking five, pictures. Five. Five. Right. Five, five. So it's the only island which allows you all kinds of things to do. I got good That's friends right. there. Yeah. Who, David Lowe is there. David Lowe is there. Yeah. And, you know, a uh, fantastic photographer yeah. and a great Penang boy, That's just right. like you. Yeah. And you go to all the look and trainings. Uh, you know, things. There's a lot do. of shit to take. A lot, right? I, it's a great island, right? I, I think it's the most colorful island. You need island. to move there. No. No? No, you don't, you'd be a fat guy. <laughs> I, I've put on enough weight as it is, you know. It's, you got to be here. You can't, you can't, there's a lot. You can't really cycle in Penang anymore. It's not the Penang you grew up in. I got to say this. No, it, it can't but, be pockets, pockets. But I got to tell you, a lot of people are moving to Penang because they can, they can make money there. You right? Think that, so a whole bunch of people, 
a lot, bunch of people have done and a, lot, a whole bunch of people have lost money just renting um, uh, all these old pre-war houses, right? Yeah, all shop done houses, up, right? Yeah. Shop houses, uh, renting out bicycles and all kinds of stuff or pizza parlors and all that. Some have made it well, you know. There's this guy, uh, he's an entrepreneur, Black Kettle. Yeah. Right? Uh, he hired a German baker. He's hand over his making money because people want bagels and croissants in Penang, apparently. In Georgetown, and he's doing well. He's expanding, right? Um, conversely, there are people who invested in little things which didn't work because uh, they learned late in life that the market in Penang is mainly on the weekends, yeah, right, rather than the weekdays. So what do you do during the weekdays? And it's very cyclical as well. Exactly, but, seasons, but it's the same yeah. business in Malacca and Penang. Yeah, um, you know. But though I think what has happened in Malaysia generally, and 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 we didn't have this when we were in, the, in the, our thirties, is that a whole bunch of people in Malaysia are starting small. As the little boy I said, who sold sneakers, they're doing things online. They 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 not just media or what. They're not doing uh, some people review uh, games. Some people, you know, there's this kid apparently who reviews toys and makes seven million a year, right? This Filipino Are you kid. Serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes money. Uh, did you say seven million a year? That's a yeah, lot yeah, of money. Yeah, seven million US, right? So he makes uh, seven million US a year reviewing toys. Seven years old. He's from Philippines, speaks good English. Should ask your son to do that. Uh, I want to get a kid who is about eight years old to to set up a cooking show. So I thought that would be interesting. He's half Arab, half Chinese, but he's too shy. At That's the a bit of a mind spin. It is, isn't it? Right? <laughs> I mean, can you imagine that? Uh, was this what hum- uh, humus bacon or something? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Never yeah. Know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. Uh, but you know, there's, so there's a lot of business online. I think entrepreneurs should do. They should yeah. start small yeah. because online, your the only thing you need is your confidence to deal with people. That's right. And buy and sell anything, right? That's right. And and you know, there are a lot of people who have been doing this. Uh, so I was telling you earlier, I buy cameras. There's this couple yeah. who set up this online store, and it's it's so big now. Uh, that they're, they're one that they're, they're one of the biggest players in the online space, uh, selling and buying cameras, accessories and all that. So so all what's it called? It's King Dim. King Dim. King Dim. Malaysia yeah. company. Malaysian company. Malaysian couple, right? I think they're Batu Pahat or what? I don't know. But I buy all my stuff from there. Most of my stuff. That guy is KL DSLR. So a lot. So all these passions that you follow, if you're a photographer, you're a video guy, you, microphones and all, you can buy everything online. And you can make money because your your cost is low. What's your biggest passion? Is it cameras? Is it microphones? Is it watches? Or is it cars? Is there a priority list? No, I, no? I mean, it just gives you're just a gadget guy, lah. I'm just a gadget guy. Right? Yeah. I just like a gadget. I, I I get amused for a while, and then I go and latch on to the next gadget. I like to see how things work, and and yeah. and why suddenly I need this. Yeah. See, the greatest thing about gadgets is this, the Steve Jobs thing. You didn't know you needed it until you. It, it yeah, existed, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. So that's the same thing. Whatever I do, you didn't you didn't know that you needed the information inside or inside until it came out. Yeah. You yeah. didn't know that you needed information that you need to know things. So she, so so that's the philosophy. You know, things I purchase, what I do to to what I do uh, as a profession. Do you believe in the concept of happiness? No. no, no. Why not? Do you believe in the concept of fulfillment? No, not really. I just believe that uh, you will never reach that. Uh, it's it's a long journey. If, and if I'm happy and I'm fulfilled, then what? So, what do you seek in life? Uh, pleasure. Okay, so pleasure can be interpreted as happiness, right? Uh, what is pleasure? No, a pleasure is is a satisfaction of. Of of uh, temporary fulfillment, right? Of something I've hit a, a note, and I'm sure there's something beyond this. So for me, it's, I like to discover things. I like to 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 go on this path of going around the corner, uh, going into the rabbit hole, and and to be surprised by what I get, right? Good or bad, to be surprised, and then move on from there, right? So so for me, that's more it. There, there's no happiness. Happiness is temporary. Fulfillment is temporary. Is happiness like a, a drive in your 86 on a weekend? Uh, a photograph well taken, which you post on Instagram. You got like those, those are little joys. Little joys. Little right? joys. There's no, I, I just because I know there's always a better picture to be taken. Yeah. A road uh, to, to be discovered. Uh, a trip uh, elsewhere. Uh, to be taken. Uh, yeah, I, look, I, I, I went for the show yesterday. Uh, 
Uh, the Turkish Cultural Center had brought this uh, bunch of uh, whirling dervishes, five yeah. of them. I've always wanted to go to Turkey. Now I want to go, and I want yeah. to go in the next two years, right? Because it's great. Uh, you see things you've never seen before. You listen to music you've only heard vaguely on the radio, or on a CD, and then now it's been performed in front of you. And hey, that's interesting. Uh, but then that goes with the ethos of today that 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 we're all looking for experiences. Yeah. That we're not looking for anything material like this car yeah. or. Or a drink, right? We are looking for an experience that says this is what life is all about. This is, this is the best chakwe tea for the moment. That's right? right. I'm sure there'll be another one better, or I'm sure it'll be almost as good as the one my mum made when I was five years old. Yeah. I'm not sure, but there it is. I'm, I'm not looking for fulfillment. I'm looking for uh, how a do you call it? Re- reinforcement of of what I, what fulfilled me previously. I'm okay. looking for a reinforcement of sorts. Right? <laughs> So so I keep going on these little adventures. Yeah, right? yeah. A car is an adventure. It's not a material possession. Yeah. Cars will come and go. Um, cameras will come and go. But it's the pleasure derived from all these gadgets that that move me. Did you ever think that you would never, you would not be married or have children at the age of what, whatever fifty? I don't know. Was it was it conscious? No, it's, it's actually. Uh, I I keep explaining to people it's a very uh, unconscious thing. You know, you're having fun. 24 years old, you're having fun and, and you just keep having fun. You travel the world, you, you do everything and then one day you wake up, you're 40-something, it's still not matter. And you just move on, you just carry on because uh, at a certain age, you acquire habits that are hard to break Yeah. and you become intolerant and intolerable. <laughs> right, so Like all of us. Uh, all of us, right? I mean, yeah. I'm sure you have habits yeah, that, yeah, that irritate absolutely. your wife and your kids. Somewhat <laughs> to know when. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so there it is, right? So you reach a certain say, "Hang on a minute. I don't want to be more trouble than I'm worth." And and I'm already enough trouble as it is for whatever I do in life, uh, professionally, uh, whatever else I do. I just want to go home and have a quiet time. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, watch movies, listen to music. I like to go for live rock shows. I was married today. Uh, you know, I, I just hold out the hope that I am. Uh, I don't know whether you know, <laughs> I get to do this. This guy called Henry Rollins. I don't uh-huh. know whether you heard of him. Have you heard of Henry no. Rollins, right? Yeah. Um, ex, ex, he's, a, he's not a rocker. He's, yeah. he's kind of like a, he does live, live concerts. I heard him on Joe Rogan one day, right? Mm-hmm. And he's a bachelor, right? He, he makes a lot of money now as a, as a kind of like a, a well-known person, as yeah. a musician. Uh-huh. He spends all his money on just one thing audio equipment uh-huh. so he's got the most kick ass fuck off speaker system in his house yeah. the one pair of speakers is like about $500,000 yeah. US right yeah. and that's all he spends his money yeah. on right? yeah. it's a bit like you right yeah. you spend your money on cameras yeah. your cars and your traveling yeah. and that's it yeah. and then he's, he, he locks himself up in his apartment like for five days right okay. doesn't talk to anyone yeah. he just rocks out by, by himself doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, yeah. doesn't take drugs that's all he wants. That's all he wants. he's an audiophile okay. his entire wall is records Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so, so, so that's happiness. Right? That's it, yeah. Everybody happiness. Some message to the young. Message yeah. to the young. Um, message to the young. There are no sacred cows. There, are, there is um, nothing in this world is permanent, right? Whatever you hold dear to yourself, know that you can break it. Know that you can always be something else. Just like that, yeah. and and you just got to run with the moment. You cannot ever hold on to fixed ideas about anything. Always run with the moment. Always know that you can you can uh, surf all the ups and downs of, of life just just by trusting yourself. Yeah, you know. And and I think the greatest thing is you need to keep falling to rise. Unfortunately, it's a cliche. Yeah. yeah. But if you don't fall, you'll never know what it's like. You know. Nicholas Nassim Taleb, you, you yeah. know this guy, yeah, right? Yeah. He wrote, he wrote a, the Black Swan. Yeah, one of his most seminal books in the recent years is yeah. about adaptability. Yeah, the one thing you gotta have in the twenty first yeah. century yeah. is the ability to adapt and to evolve. Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And that's it, right? That's what that's you're talking it. about. That's why it is. Yeah, if you don't adapt, you know, you you will be left far behind. And and I think we grew up in the in in a time when there were the most changes from analog to digital. Beyond digital, I mean, in our time, we had phones with rotary dial and yeah. push button. And yeah. today, we just have a slab of silicon that does everything we, we, we watch on Star Trek. Yeah, man. Right? So, think about it, right? 
There's always man. You're the man, lah, Jabba. No, lah, man. The man is you, bro. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> Thank the man. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Cheers. All right, man.